So uh, I'm, I'm playing Gondor. It's, uh, it's some weird times where, uh, let me flip the camera around. Let me show you this because I think, I think I broke my game. So, <laughs> and I'm hoping I'm reading these rules right. I, I, uh, I don't know what's going on with me lately. <clears throat> me and rule books are just not being agreeable. So, fireballs. Fireballs can, uh, when they're fired, can scatter. And this, this fireball was aimed here, scattered here. This is the Minas Tirith Gate. Now, the Minas Tirith Gate, where did the little stack go? Here he is. Minas Tirith Gate. Uh, has in front of it the Grand or whatever it is, uh, Doohickey. Big battering ram, magical battering ram. It's the only thing that can knock down the gate, right? So, uh, that's all good. Good, the bad guys, the folks from Mordor, uh, <laughs> knock down the gate. They roll a five. They used a spell from the Nazgul dude. He used one point. That's kind of stupid that it, then there's another, just a goofy little thing on the chart, but you, you could arguably use eight points, but you only need one. Yet it's on the chart. Anyway, um, it's a Richard Burke thing. You, uh, you, so the gate's open. Okay, awesome. So now all my dudes can go into it, except that, uh, you know, there's a dude in here. Let me just, you know, right. And he also has the cauldron, which is, there were three little things underneath here. He actually has one left in there that I used, but I, but I used it on this. Now, if I use it, it you know, first of all, is he on the ground level or is he on the upper level? And maybe I'm overthinking it here. But if I drop oil on him, I kill the dude underneath and then the Grand Ram has to be manned by somebody else. Regardless, so I would have dropped that first because I can do that at any time. Knocked out that guy. He brings another fellow up. I, this chap would then have to, uh, I would have to have another oil marker available handy which come from the cauldron so i would either have them here or i wouldn't but i could arguably go get it from another cauldron and bring it over here and drop it on this dude again and keep doing that but let's just to say for example that that was the last oil and i replaced the dude here we roll the five it opens the gate and everybody can go through okay so in essence we can get put the leader aside because he's pretty useless anyway you don't need these leaders uh <clears throat> because they um you don't need these leaders oh you know what i guess what you could do with the uh grand you could also bash down further walls that's what you could do so that's cool i could i could knock other walls down with the cross so, we, so we'll keep him uh, just off to one side for a second. Uh, you, you don't need these leaders. For some reason, you're supposed to use them to rally disorganized units, but I can't find out where units get disorganized in this game. They either are half eliminated, eliminated, or they retreat. Anyway, so let's just say uh, that all worked out. Now, I, uh, I want to bring the siege towers in to cross these walls. Or I want to bring the catapults up so that I can knock down these walls and create a breach, either a partial or a full, I think it is, or maybe it's just a full. And then I want to, you know, just, you know, powerhouse my way up into the capital, blah, 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 go, to, you know, conquer everything and capture all the different layers of Minas Tirith. All right, well, how are we going to do that? Uh, Siege Tower can move two. So he goes one to there, and then he'll have to wait, and then... That's assuming this unit isn't here. Let's even assume that I can kill this unit in this hex. Let's just say we kill that unit. And we can get rid of this action. My, these are new um, pincer, doohickeys, forceps, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> uh, they're a little tight, so I've got to split them apart. This adds plus three movement points. All right, so I bring a catapult up. Uh, he's got to come with a guy. So he's adjacent. Plus three movement points. These guys have two movement points. They can't get in. <laughs> and I, that, that is the only place you can enter unless you go over the wall, which means that no cavalry can come in. 
Uh, actually, the cavalry can come through, but my catapults and my siege engines are going to be stuck outside the walls. So that's a really bad problem to have uh, for the uh, for the, the, the Sauron's forces. So these guys can, you know, pop a ladder out. So they put a ladder here, and then you you go you go up, right, and go in, and then they can go to the next wall and do the same thing again. But you've got to be adjacent to it, and then the next turn do it. So that's uh, without combat, two, four, six, eight, ten turns. That le that's not enough turns to get up into into the the pinnacle or the top of the the the, the Gondor Gondorian uh, capital building or whatever it is where they have the big fight. Uh, so. I think I broke the game by scattering into here. Uh, and Rohan had just arrived. I was just about to move my Rohan guys up and it was going to be all fun. It's only turn five. I got all my Rohans ready to go. They were going to be a big cavalry battle here. It was going to be awesome. These dudes just crossed over here. He'll get over. He probably won't make it this turn. He'll get killed by, the, the, by Rohan. But these guys, they can just ladder over. So they can go, they can make it two, two turns, four turns, six turns, eight turns, ten. They can't really make it either. So now it's not about necessarily controlling all of the, uh, all of the areas because it's VPs, right? You get VPs for not having any enemy units in this area and this area and all these, all these different areas. The combat's kind of interesting. It's a it's a funky little combat system. Uh, you you there's a probability that you'll cause a casualty. So you roll to see based on class of unit, your attacker strength versus your defender's strength uh, in a in a two d six band of numbers. And then if you get the right number, then you go to the casualty results table, then you roll a die. And then depending on what the morale level is of the guy you're fighting against, so the Z rated guys are the worst. Uh, the, uh, you know, the X rated guys, are pretty good. And the W rated guys are the best, which, uh, probably all of Aragorn's guys, no, they're, they're all, they're X rated as well. Oh, there's some W, the men. Yeah. These guys are men, they're W's. So, um, that's interesting. Well, I'm probably gonna have to reset it. And, uh, I say, don't fire, don't fire here or here because it can drift. Um, that was really stupid. <laughs> it was really funny, but it was really stupid. Because you want you want these catapults to come in so that you can shoot at the units on the on the on the walls first of all, and secondly, you want to knock down the walls so that you can just r roll on through because you have the siege phase. You do your action there, and then the guys can move through, and then you can keep going that way. Um. <laughs> I'm just a dork. All right. Well, I guess I'll get restarted or maybe we'll just pack it up and we'll play it again sometime soon. But I tell you, it's a pretty interesting set of rules here. And I don't want to get into a long sort of review type thing or discussion about the rules. But it's got, this is a really smart little game. Uh, I, I don't know that it's all 100% tight and done. Uh, like I said, there's some issues with, I don't know, the the morale rally ratings of units. So uh, the magic stuff is cool. So there's spells that each side can cast. You've got a finite number of points you can use to cast spells. So anyway, it's all good. I'll talk to you soon.